Howdy y'all, I'm James and this is Clearwater Fishing and today we're changing the oil on the old four stroke Mercury. This is the 60 horse. This also works on the 40 and the 50 as well. Kind of the same process. I think all of their four stroke engines in the 40, 50 and 60 are exactly the same ever since they've uh, built these guys. So if you have a four stroke Mercury, this set of instructions should work for you. I'm kind of redoing a video I did about a year ago. The audio was terrible, so please forgive me for that one. Hopefully this one will overtake that one and will give you some better instructions. But before we get started, I'd like to ask you guys to subscribe to the channel. We do all sorts of great fishing content on the channel, even boat maintenance videos. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to catch more fish. Well, first thing, I want to show you guys the oil change kit that I bought. This is a Quicksilver oil change kit, four-stroke oil change uh, for 40, 50, and 60 horsepower EFI engines, uh, Mercury engines, that is. Uh, this is the 25W40 oil selection. There is a 10W30 if you're running your engine in colder temperatures. So this is the kit I bought. I actually got it on Amazon. It comes with three liters of oil. This is a three, takes three liters, not three quarts. So if you just go buy this from your local store, you're probably gonna buy it in quarts, so you'll need to buy four quarts. This comes with three liters. It obviously comes with the oil filter. Uh, I'll just kind of show you guys the part number there. Boom, hopefully you guys can see that pretty well. There's the part number. Uh, it comes with this tool to uh, keep your oil filter from leaking all over your engine. Uh, I'll usually just stuff a rag in there. And lastly, it comes with this little gasket that uh, goes around your oil plug so you can replace that. So next, let's talk about the tools you're gonna need to complete your oil change. I have a socket and ratchet set here. Uh, an 18 millimeter socket is what mine takes. So 18 millimeters uh, goes on the plug. So you'll need an oil filter wrench or a set of channel locks to remove your oil filter. Um, I've done it several years with a set of channel locks. They usually get wide enough to grab it. It's not a very large oil filter. So if you don't have an oil filter wrench, don't panic. And lastly, well, you need a rag of some kind to keep your hands clean. Or if you don't have one of these things to keep around your oil filter when you're taking it off, you need a rag to stuff under there so your oil doesn't drip everywhere. Oh, and I almost forgot, you need a oil drain pan of some kind as well. Okay, first we're gonna go ahead and remove the cowling. Uh, simple handle right here, just pull it out and it pops up. Take the cowling off and exposes the engine. Earlier when I was talking about the tools that you needed, I forgot a funnel. So you need a funnel as well. So for those of you who have never changed the oil before, I'm gonna go over a few of the parts of the engine that you really need to know about. So if you're driving the boat, all the stuff I'm talking about here is on the left side of the engine. So here we have the oil filter you have the engine oil dipstick. And then over here on the back of the engine, this yellow cap here, that is where you feel the oil. And lastly, still on the left side of the engine, you have your plug here halfway between the engine and the foot. So to get this party started, I gotta get my oil pan underneath. And I also want to angle my engine so the oil just doesn't drip down the side. So I'm going to trim up and then I'm going to angle my engine so the oil will flow straight out of it. Kind of just like that. And I'm going to have my oil pan down here quickly and easily able to adjust uh, because it's going to want to flow way out here to begin with and then it'll start shortening up and I don't want to make a huge mess. So I'll have it out and then I'll push it in. If you have an oil pan like mine, you want to make sure you uh, pop the little 
the air vent there and uh, <laughs> otherwise you might end up with a mess on your hands. So next we're just going to put our ratchet on here and we're going to break it loose on our plug. Uh, lefty loosey, righty tighty, still applies here. I don't feel like I got my pin in the right place. Make sure at this point you have your rag handy. And uh, you might want to be on out of the line of fire too. That actually worked out pretty well. So my hand's got some oil on it, we'll just go ahead and wipe that off. Okay, you see it getting short, I need to move it. So now we just let this drain for a little while and then we'll put the plug, plug back in. In the meantime, I'm gonna take my plug and I'm gonna replace the gasket on it. Pretty simple replacement. You just pull the gasket off and then you'll just put the other one on. There's no uh, wrong way. They're both sides are exactly the same. But you wanna make sure you put the, plug, the gasket back on otherwise you might have a leak. So we only have a slight drip going on now. I'm gonna wipe it down, clean around the drain with my rag. I have my plug once again. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna clean that one more time. Oh, so I'm gonna clean it one more time. Clean it one more time, and then we're gonna put the plug back in. Give it another wipe. Get our ratchet and socket, start tightening this thing down. You do not want to over tighten, but you do not want to under tighten this guy. So a good, a good ugga dugga should be fine. Yeah, I know that's a, not a correct term, but one, one good snug fit should be fine. Just like that. And that should be just fine and it shouldn't leak, especially with a new gasket. So now it's time to put the motor back down and then we're gonna start working on the oil filter. And then after that, we're gonna go refill our engine with oil. All right, so now we're ready to change the oil filter. A real quick tip for me is to always write down the date that you change the oil and the oil filter on the oil filter itself. So that way, in case you forget, it's right here on the oil filter so you can look it up well, whenever you need to. First, I always like to see if I can break it loose by hand. I mean, if I can, I don't think I'm going to be able to because uh, this is kind of a tight spot to be working in. Okay, so these old filters are typically pretty tight. So I'm going to start off with my pair of channel locks here. See if I can get a good grip on it. And break it loose. All right, there we go. A little twist down on it. Okay, now we're loose. And at this point, you can stick this guy in there. Uh, you have a little tab, smaller tab, or this larger one, you can stick it in there. Uh, we're gonna try it, I don't know, first time I've ever had one. We're gonna see if we can get this guy finished off. Apparently I didn't break it loose enough. So, I got my rag handy just in case. Okay, that should be plenty. We'll see if this guy even works or not. Oh, uh, well there was a little drip there and it seemed to have caught it. So we're gonna put this down in our oil pan and now we're gonna wipe out that little area so it doesn't make a mess. I mean, truthfully, I mean, do you really even need this thing? I mean, there's not much in there. So I usually just stuff a rag in there or wipe it up when I'm done. So an important part of uh, reinstalling your oil filter is making sure you lubricate the seal. Uh, some people will use their old oil. I like to uh, crack open a new one and lube it up that way. I'll put that there. Just kind of coat it on there. Oh, oops. 
Well, I wasn't supposed to be getting old on myself. Hmm. Well, that's going to like that a lot. Just put a little coat on there. Nothing serious. But you want to make sure the seal's lubricated. That way it doesn't get bunched up when you tighten it down. So I want to go ahead and start this tightening process. Before my wife murders me for getting oil on a nice shirt. Yeah, I don't think she's going to like that. So, uh, y'all be thinking about me when I don't post any more videos and I'm dead. So once you have your oil filter on, you want to make sure you get another quarter to half twist on there. That way it's plenty snug. Oh, there we go. Plenty snug. And our oil filter's changed, our oil's been drained, so now it's time to, well, put more oil back in the engine. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that real quick. So as you can see, we got our oil fill right here. These guys put things on so daggum tight. Grab my little pliers there and break it loose. So my oil filter won't hang out in there too good. So a quick solution is to raise the engine again. There you go. So the engine takes three liters of oil. Uh, if you buy it in quarts, you're gonna need to buy four quarts because a liter is a little bit more than a quart. And now I have my funnel in there ready to go. And now we're gonna just pour it in. One quart. I'm pretty sure I said first quart the last time, but that was actually the first liter. This is the second liter, the third liter, and we're done putting oil on it. You wanna take your funnel out, make sure you don't drip it everywhere, put it somewhere where you don't mind it getting something messy. So there looks good to me. Put your cap back on. I think these guys had it cross-threaded at some point. One of the first times I didn't spill any oil while pouring it in, so that was really nice. Tighten that cap down pretty good. Lower our engine back down. You wanna make sure the engine is level. I'm gonna open it up to you guys so you guys can see. Uh, remember the engine oil uh, level indicator, the dipstick here. Uh, well, we're gonna wipe that guy down and check it real quick. So it's got a pretty large range here. Let's see if I can get you guys a good view. Really, this dot is add and this dot is max and you wanna run it in between. Pretty simple. I put it back in there all the way and right now it's sitting right at max. Uh, not too big of a concern because the oil filter does not have any oil in it at this point in time. So I'm gonna put this guy back on click it back down. So next time I run my outboard, I'm not too worried about it being short of oil. I'm actually going to run it. And then when I get back home, I'll check the oil level and uh, see if I need to add any. Long as it's in between those two areas, you should be just fine. And there you have it. That's how you change your oil in your 40, 50 or 60 horsepower EFI four stroke Mercury engines. Not too hard of a process, save yourself a few hundred bucks each and every year uh, by changing your oil yourself. Not that complex of a process. And if you follow my steps and buy the oil change kit, uh, the oil change kit actually has a set of instructions on how to do it as well, in case you wanna follow along with that. Overall, this process is really easy and I highly recommend everyone doing it themselves. One last final piece of advice is while you have the cowling off and are able to easily look at the engine, Take some time, look over the engine, look at your timing belt, uh, look at your, your spark plug wires, look at your, all your equipment in here and see if you notice anything that looks kind of old, faded, corroded, uh, rotten, something that's just falling apart. Um, that way you can identify problems even before they start. So I highly recommend doing that uh, just while you're doing some general maintenance on your outboard. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video or learned something, uh, be sure you smash the like button. But just like always, until next time, 
get out there and go catch you some fish.